The floor is lava. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. But honestly, it's kind of falling apart. You might not feel it yet, but a huge part of North America has already lost 37 miles worth of rock from its foundation. And no, this isn't about earthquakes or giant sinkholes. It's about the continent losing pieces of the very thing that keeps the ground from wobbling around like a bad carnival ride. A team of researchers has just dropped a geological bombshell. Part of North America's ground is thinning out like a very sad, very slow ice cream drip. How do they know? They basically gave Earth a high-tech full-body MRI and created 3D maps showing how rocks once considered indestructible are now melting away into the planet's guts, like an upside-down cheese pizza inside an oven. But to really understand this mess, you first have to meet my old friends, cratons. Cratons are like the roots of the continents. They're thick, tough, and ancient. We're talking billions of years old. These bad boys survived meteor impacts, supervolcanoes, and even the tectonic movement of plates. If the plates got into fistfights, for example, you can bet we would see mountain ranges being born. If they got a divorce, drifting apart from each other, then a whole new ocean would be born. All of these things leave scars on the surface of Earth, but the cratons seem to always remain unfazed, like the cockroaches of geology. And since a craton can basically get punched in the face and feel nothing, scientists always assumed these things were nearly indestructible. But then, a group of researchers took their fancy machines to the test and realized that, wait, the cratons are falling apart? How? Enter the Farallon Plate, a really ancient tectonic plate that started to slide under North America's major plate over 100 million years ago. This is a pretty normal process, actually. It's called subduction, and it's how Earth recycles rocks and keeps itself from overheating. This subduction thing has been happening for so long that, by now, the Farallon is almost 400 miles away from the Craton, sitting pretty chill at the lower mantle, weirdly close to the outer core of our planet. But the Farallon has been causing trouble, like that one roommate who moved out but keeps leaving weird stuff in the fridge. You see, as it sinks, it tugs on the bottom of North America's foundation, stretching it out and causing pieces to fall off into the deep mantle. And if that wasn't enough drama, the sinking Farallon has also leaked water and carbon dioxide into the surrounding rocks, making the craton even softer and easier to shred apart. Thanks, Farallon. Very cool of you. By studying hundreds of earthquakes across thousands of monitoring stations, Scientists have confirmed the story. Big chunks of continental material are dripping downward, thinning the craton by as much as 37 miles. That's more missing rocks than can fit into a milk carton. Sounds dramatic, right? But don't worry. This is happening at a snail's pace. It'll take millions of years for anything noticeable to happen. Your great-great-great-great few grandkids from the distant future might still be standing on solid ground. But... Don't get too comfy. This thing may not be an urgent problem, but there's another type of sinking that's happening faster than you can say, help. Here's the thing. By 2050, at least 32 major cities in the US, including New York, Baltimore, and Charleston, could be partially underwater. And guess what? This one is mostly our fault. Scientists noticed that since 2007, some cities have been sinking into the ground between 0.04 and 0.08 inches every year. Charleston, in South Carolina, is pulling ahead in the worst way possible, sinking 0.15 inches annually. Sure, these numbers sound tiny and a bit ridiculous, but Charleston is barely 9 feet above sea level, and a little sinking goes a long way when the ocean is breathing down your neck. On really bad flood days, people there have to abandon their cars and basically swim home. This whole phenomenon is called land subsidence. And when you mix sinking land with rising sea levels, you get a disaster cocktail of flooded streets, salty farmland, ghost forests, and a lot of very cranky homeowners. And it doesn't stop with just homes. Infrastructure like bridges, roads, airports, and power plants all things we rely on daily are also at risk of serious damage. 
flooded electrical grids, and sunken highways could cause billions more in economic losses and create major safety hazards for communities. Now, let's be fair. Not everything is humanity's fault. Some of this trouble dates all the way back to the Ice Age. About 12,000 years ago, massive ice sheets covered the northern US. They were heavy, like seriously heavy. The weight pushed the land down, and when the ice melted, the ground didn't just pop back up like a trampoline. Instead, it started playing a weird game of geological seesaw. The places that were squished started rising, and the places that weren't got pulled down. This whole process, called glacial isostatic adjustment, try to say that three times fast. But of course, humans found a way to make it worse. Groundwater extraction is a major culprit. Think of it like pulling the stuff out of the mattress. After a while, the whole thing just sags. In places like California's Central Valley, the land is dropping by up to 8 inches a year because we keep pumping out water during droughts. In cities like New York, the problem isn't just water. Skyscrapers themselves are making it worse. Yep. Turns out, if you stack millions of tons of concrete and steel onto soft ground, it tends to flatten. And in case you're wondering, the total mass of New York City's buildings is around 1.68 trillion pounds. That's about the same as 3.5 million Statues of Liberty piled up. With so much weight concentrated over a relatively small area, the underlying soils have no choice but to compress over time. And if you thought it couldn't get messier, think again. We've been building dams, which stop rivers from delivering fresh sediment to coastal areas. That sediment is kind of like Mother Nature's way of fluffing the ground back up. Without it, coastal lands are compacting like an old sponge. Plus, when wetlands are drained for agriculture or construction, the peaty soil dries out and collapses. Honestly, it's like the ground just can't catch a break. Scientists also noticed that the areas that used to be lush wetlands are now among the fastest sinking spots in the country, especially along the Gulf Coast. Louisiana, for example, is losing about a football field of land because of this mix of subsidence and rising seas. So what's the end game here for us regular people who just want to live above sea level? Well, it's not looking great. Ghost forests, which are basically drowned woodlands, are popping up. Farmland is turning salty and unusable. And even sunny day flooding, where streets flood without any rain, is becoming a thing. Yikes! Meanwhile, over on the west coast, California is not exactly winning either. San Francisco and Los Angeles are both sinking, which means that rising sea levels could hit them twice as hard and twice as fast. In some places, like the Palos Verdes Peninsula, the ground has been sinking so fast, people over there might as well live like moles. So, is America turning into the next Atlantis? Probably not next week, but without serious action, like cutting back on groundwater pumping and planning smarter cities, at least 500,000 people are in serious danger. And the housing damage could easily rack up a jaw-dropping $109 billion by 2050. In the end, while North America isn't about to sink like a poorly made souffle, it's definitely showing some cracks in the crust. So maybe let's ease up on groundwater pumping, rethink how and where we build, and invest a little more in keeping our feet dry. After all, if the floor really does become lava someday, we're gonna wish we had at least fixed the leaks first. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.